engineering graphics and design learners this is the second video in my series detailing how to absolutely nail your EGD pad for this year now we've just had an overview in the previous video in this video we're going to drill into the actual pad document and have a look at what is it that they require for you to do let's get going righty -o, let's take this pad document and let's look at what is it that you need to design this year now it's always good to have highlighters with you because you'll see how helpful this is make sure you have a printout of this document take a highlighter pick any color and we're going to start off by reading together all right so first of all the scenario a non-governmental organization whose purpose it is to source funds to help schools that need additional facilities identify the school in your area that needs a new building that's important okay consisting of a media center a kitchen and toilet facilities all right those are the three components of this new building the ngo has decided to broaden its mandate and is running a competition requiring design solutions for this building the design firm that you work for so that's going to be important you're going to have to come up with a design firm a name of a design firm which you work for has decided to enter the competition and has tasked you to come up with and submit a suggested design solution that's your purpose you have to come up with a design solution that fits this scenario of a new media center kitchen and toilet facilities all right for a school in your area all right the brief for the competition states that the new building must be freestanding it must be a l-shaped or a t-shaped single story brick structure you see how each one of these is going to become a specification later on and each one of these items must be fully met in your design with a double pitched hip and valley roof with a corrugated iron finish okay so there you can see what a double pitched hip and valley roof look like we'll of course go into more details later the new building will forthwith simply refer to as the building okay let's move on a little bit right so to support the support the read to learn campaign the media center and i'm going to just draw on this there's the media center i'll just do orange this media center here of the building must consist of a modern library as well as a separate computer room with 10 built-in computer stations okay so this media center here that media center must have a modern library separate computer room with 10 built-in computers the entire media center section of the building must have a floor area of at least 180 square meters now here's a tip you'll see why i say so but this can be between 165 square meters and 180 square meters so just keep that in mind it's a maximum maximum and a minimum 165 to 180 with only one entrance okay one entrance in the form of double aluminium and glass swing doors the library and the computer room must have a common glass wall office okay so in between this computer room and the library there must be a common glass walled office of approximately 15 square meters from where all activities and movements in both the library again both the library and the computer room can be monitored so someone sitting in the middle and they're looking either side and they can see from their office the library and the computer room the office must also be accessible okay that office must be accessible from both the library and the computer room okay the media center must have an 18 square meter storeroom with no windows important and a roll up door for security purposes there must be a built-in issuing desk situated near the entrance of the library so it tells you where this built-in issuing desk and that's for if you take out a book then they're going to book it out of course here to record the issuing and the returning of books as well as ample built-in bookshelves along the walls that's important this is built-in bookshelves along the walls the greater part of the library must be an open space for additional freestanding bookshelves magazine racks as well as tables chairs where learners can sit and read books now remember this open space you're not going to draw in eventually all these chairs and tables you're only going to draw fixtures in other words only built-in bookshelves built-in issuing desks etc okay 
So this sport talks about the media center, this paragraph. The next paragraph is going to talk about the kitchen. So I'm going to take my blue, highlight that blue, this kitchen here, do it all the way around, is in this paragraph. Okay, let's zoom a little bit in. Okay, now what do they say? Adjacent to this media center, next to this media center. This media center, of course, is the modern library and computer room, plus its office, etc. But adjacent to that must be a kitchen with a total area of at least 70 square meters where, what? Food will be prepared for the school's feeding scheme. The kitchen must have sufficient work surfaces for the preparation of food, as well as two double zincs. And what do they ask here? Space. Only space for two industrial stoves, two industrial fridges. They don't ask you to draw these. It's only space that you need to leave for this. There must be, what, a four meter wide serving edge with a roll up door in one of the outer walls. That's important. Inside the kitchen, there must also be 18, million, 18 square meter pantry, which must be placed close to a three meter wide delivery doorway. So it must be placed close, three, million, three meter wide delivery doorway with a roll up door. So we've got a roll up door here and we have a roll up door there for the actual serving edge. The kitchen must have one external door and for safety purposes, an emergency exit door to the media center. Wow, they are really describing this well. And you need to make sure you take your time to understand all that is written here pertaining to the actual kitchen. The next color, we're going to use pink and we're going to look at the toilet facility. So we'll just bring all of that down here and let's look at this now. The molding must include separate male and female toilet facilities which must cater for learners in wheelchairs. So it's for disabled learners and be accessible from the outside only. That only is important. These bathrooms, you only are able to access from the outside, nothing from the inside. The female toilet, what does it specify? Must have a hand wash basin and two separate toilets. And the male toilet must have a hand wash basin and a separate toilet and a single wall mount mounted urinal. So this toilet size must be considered for a wheelchair as well as one of these toilets will at least have to uh, consider the wheelchair. All right, so that's the kit, uh, the toilet paragraph. Now let's look at the rest of this. The building must include undercover walkways that run along the outside of the building, linking the toilet facilities and the kitchen serving hatch to the entrance of the media center. Very important, this walkway. This walkway must, of course, also extend from the entrance of the media center to the existing school buildings. And we'll look at that now on the actual plan. As the school caters for disabled learners, the undercover walkway must be wide enough to allow two wheelchairs to pass comfortably. So you have to look at that. How wide do we need this to pass two wheelchairs? Then there must be sufficient electrical lighting, switch sockets, outlights in all the rooms and areas in the building. There should also be sufficient windows to let in as much natural light as possible. All sewer and wastewater from the building must be connected to the existing sewerage line on the school property and the entire building may not exceed 280 square meters. Okay, that's an overview of your actual design project. Let's have a look at the site plan. Righto, so here's the site plan that was given to you for your pet. Now, again, you can use your highlighter. Let's look at where's the existing buildings. Here's the existing buildings. Okay, then we have our heights above sea level and you can see this is the highest part of the actual building with this corner being the lowest. We have our building lines all around. There's a three meter building line, three meter. Here we have a six meter and there is six meter. What's interesting is the size of this. This distance here is 134 meters. Okay, remember this is in millimeters. This distance here is 200 meters. So we've got quite a big stand 
which is stand 61. They've also given us the measurements of the buildings, the existing sport fields, the setting out dimensions, in other words, how far is this building from the boundary. They've given us the sewer lines, the current sewer lines here. Um, they've got the entrances here and the street names. Okay, now the question is, remember, you have to place a 280 square meter building on this property and you can only do a t-shape or an l-shape okay so there's two key spaces here we have a space here sufficient space to place it and in this area if you consider a 280 square meter building if we just do a 28 meters by 10 meters with that being 20 meters we'll quite easily i think fit it in here we'll as easily have 28 meters here and 10 meters here if we would like to fit it in the advantage of placing your building here is for the fact that you can have your walkway join the existing building plus the sewer connections is going to be quite easy you could also of course place your building in this area with your walkways connecting here and connecting to the sewer line so you've got two options of where you want to place your buildings either at, at this end or this end it's up to you how do you want to do that but you need to consider the fact that the walkways need to join the existing school building as well as you need to connect to the sewer lines and of course there's ample space either here and here right here what a privilege to have shared that with you thank you so much for watching I love getting feedback from you, so please go down to the comments and share with me your thoughts, your ideas, and your questions you might have. Now it's your turn.